The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Corn School. Today I'm down in Chatham, Ontario, catching up with Pride Seeds product manager Matt Chappell. Matt, how's it going? Hey, Bern, I'm doing well. Now, I'm looking back here. I'm seeing a little bit of tar spot. Uh, we are in your nursery here, um, your hybrid nursery. And one of the things you guys are working on is you know, how to build a better defense for tar spot. Um, where are we, from a seed industry perspective, on defending the crop against tar spot? Yeah, uh, there is a lot of work being done on hybrid selection, uh, hybrid truthing things out in the field. Uh, companies, including Pride Seeds, have a lot of information on tar spot ratings and the overall tolerance. Of course, you know, no field to field is equal. Uh, we see different levels of severity, right? And uh, it's really important to understand that. Uh, as an industry, I think there really are no tolerant products to date. Uh, and most products have some level of susceptibility, but there are differences. And I think most importantly, what we want to talk about today is before the hybrid stage, right? Before the grower gets to touch and feel a hybrid and gets to grow it on their own operation, whether it be silage or grain corn specifically. So looking back, taking a step back, looking at inbreds is really kind of a, a key way to, to develop better products. So talk about what's going on in the nursery here and what you have, um, you know, and, and what's the process for developing that, uh, that tolerance, you know, in a hybrid nursery like this? Yeah. Uh, this is one of many sites within our network, uh, one particularly in Canada, but a site that you know really helps us ground truth what we've identified in genetics, in gene, molecular marking. Um, molecular markers are a useful tool, a useful innovation that, uh, that breeders can use to identify groups of genes that may confer resistance to specific diseases and no different to tar spot uh, from other diseases specifically. So. Um, when you think about that work being done in a lab and then really putting it into the field, putting it into an environment where we know disease exists, where we're highly likely to get level of infection, is really important to identifying genetic tolerance of an inbred line, of a parent line, and what it possibly can bring to hybrid tolerance in, a, in the right cross. Yeah, and I, I think the timeline is important here, Matt, as well. I mean, like, um, tar spot showed up here maybe almost eight years ago, and from a breeding perspective, you know, really to, to, to develop, sort of identify and develop tolerance and those hybrids takes some time. It sure does. Uh, in the pathology world, I mean, anything under a decade is, is pretty young, right? Um, and you think about the breeding world and the... the the main gains that have been made in breeding and the, the speed of breeding. Basically, in conventional breeding, we can be integrating traits uh, and doing other selection throughout the whole year in some part of the world. So, counter seasons, yep. we call that. Yep. With tar spot selection, right, you have to grow those products in their environment where they're going to get the disease. So, I mean, making strives. But could be multiple years, right, before we see big genetic gains and we see those products that really mitigate all those nasty things that show up when we have tar spot infection. Yeah. So talk about that. When, when, when products start to emerge from this nursery, from, from into the lineup, what type of, uh, I guess, performance characteristics are you going to expect and look for from those new hybrids? Yeah, hopefully those crosses uh, really demonstrate improved stock integrity in the presence of tar spot, better harvestability, and of course, mitigating those huge yield losses that we can associate with tar spot infection, right? So if we have the hybrid that is able to stave off severe infection later into the growing season, get into those later growth stages, that is gonna be huge because I don't think we'll ever truly avoid it in the near future. It is tough to avoid the infection of the disease. We've seen it on every hybrid, basically at some point, but severity, so a hybrid's ability to fight it off, have the, the strong immune system to really be, to be, to make it to harvest yeah. and, and yield strong compared to other hybrids. So that would be one of the key things that we really want to get. And of course, you know, to put a percentage on it, you know, if we could mitigate to start five, 10% of that yield loss associated with it, that would be a huge gain. Yeah. And you've also got the fungicides as that sort of, sort of as, as the relief pitcher, shall we say, in the bullpen um, to sort of, to, to, to support the, uh, the starting pitcher. I'm, I'm talking baseball here. Hey, um, let's talk about uh, timelines here. Um, I know, 
you know, we, we talked about it, it's, it's a relatively new disease. You know, is there, um, where are we at the pipeline? When do we expect maybe some, something to emerge that, you know, we, we might say would be a better defense against tar spot? Yeah, I mean, anytime you're in breeding, you have to have a long-term vision burn. Uh, we can identify things in the here and now, and as you have genetic pools that, you know, you can identify those markers or where we might have susceptibility and avoid that in future populations for new female or male parents. Um, if we can mitigate that earlier and, you know, gain progress at the inbred level, surely five, seven years, we start to really pump out commercial hybrids that are above and beyond this level of tolerance that we have currently in commercial lineups. Yeah. Hey, final question for you, um, you know, when we talk disease and corn, uh, northern, you know, corn leaf blight. Um, uh, I've been around a long time, and it's, it's something that growers tackle all the time, but they, they sort of settle into sort of managing that. Um, how do you compare that to something like Tarraspa? Yeah, you know, if you really want to look in the history books about northern corn leaf blight, it was a huge problem for a lot of years. Um, modern breeding and techniques like molecular markers identifying you know genes has really improved hybrid tolerance to northern corn leaf blight i will say that i don't personally see the same level of infection that we once saw with northern corn leaf blight uh, i think we've mostly bred to select and overcome that disease uh, and i do have faith that you know the future for tar spot tolerance is from the breeding side of things starts with great inbred great parents um, to make great hybrids. So, you know, down the pipeline, I think we can overcome this disease and, and be more tolerant and, and mitigate these yield losses associated. And, you know, when you think about where that starts from, it starts typically in the south where we had those full mm -hmm. season hybrids attack first. So, you know, as we get more exposure in early genetics and identify some more of those things, you know, the efforts will continue to expand and the development pace. So, um, Hey, overcoming a yep. disease, it's here and now, yep. it's a reality, but I think we can, you know, stave off and uh, keep that stock integrity and yields that, we're, uh, that we've all set up for. Yeah, exactly. Um, hey, Matt, uh, great stuff. Thanks for the invite down to the nursery here. Um, always great to have you on the Corn School. My pleasure, Byrne. Great to, great to host you in Kent <laughs> County. Good stuff.